The lightsaber pike is the sacred weapon of the Temple Guard. Its twin yellow blades symbolize the eternal flame of the Order and the vigilance of its protectors. Hey, what's happening, everyone? I am Sir James, coming at you guys with another Star Wars Galaxy's Edge product review. This time, we have the Jedi Temple Guard Legacy Saber. So before we get into it, let's go ahead and go over some basic details. First off, where are you able to find this item? Well, this item, along with any and other themed character sabers, is going to be located in Doc Ondar's, which is right next door to Savi's workshop and right across the way from the Millennium Falcon. Second thing is, how much does this one cost? This is going to go for the low cost of one. $110, which fits alongside with some of the other themed characters within that price range. For example, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Darth Vader, and Rey's lightsaber. Or as most of you are about to type in the comment section right now, don't you mean Anakin's? Anyways, let's go ahead and get straight into it. So just like with any and all themed legacy sabers, you of course will have a crate to house your themed character. And of course, a symbol on the front, depending on which one you get. Of course, some of the sabers that you might be picking up will come in a slightly larger box. For example, Ahsoka Tano's and of course, Kylo Ren and other characters, for example, like Darth Maul and Asajj Ventress and even Luke Skywalker based on Return of the Jedi, will you typically have an additional piece of an accessory in the bottom of the box. So upon by pressing the button, you'll be able to review such saber. And I have to say, so far, based on all the themed legacy sabers that I have noticed, I feel like this one looks the best when it's inside the crate. I think it's because of the contrast of colors where you got the saber that's nice and bright with the white and gold finish. And then, of course, the black uh, plush here inside the box just makes the detail of this pop out a lot more. So let's go ahead and remove the saber off to the side really quick. Now, I know you guys are probably asking right now is, are we able to connect the Jedi Temple Guard Saber? Is there anything else in the box like a connector? Let's go ahead and reveal that right now. I already know the answer, but for those of you who don't know, the answer is no. There is no connector piece at all, which is very unfortunate. I don't know why Disney dropped the ball on this one. So if you can't already guess, that is a bit of a negative. Now. Apparently, from what I've heard, and I've seen uh, listings for it on Etsy, apparently people have parts that you can get to actually connect two Jedi Temple Guard Sabers to form the Lightsaber Pike. And if you want links to those, I'll put a couple of different options in the video description below. There's one where it's just uh, stationary, and there's another one where you could have the fold-up design, and will actually fold out, which is pretty cool. Now, here we have the Temple Guard Saber. And overall, I love the color tone. Now, I was re-watching some clips from the uh, Star Wars, the Clone Wars, but I know this one's based off the Rebels one. But in the Clone Wars, I, re I recall these actually glowing green, which uh, I know for a fact that this one does not do that. And of course, there is the on and off switch. And this will use the CoverTech ring. Now, as far as the Saber goes, this one actually does have quite a bit of heftiness to its initial weight, which I do like that because I know the Obi-Wan Saber that I reviewed um, did have a little bit of weight, but it was also light at the same time. This one easily outweighs that. Uh, on the bottom here of this silver portion is going to be where the battery pack goes. So just to demonstrate which uh, yeah, this one has a little bit of weight on it, but this is where the battery pack is gonna be located. And do keep in mind, just like with any legacy themed characters, along with the Sabi's lightsabers, these will utilize three AAA batteries. And of course, if you need to put a blade in it, there is going to be a little black cup here, which I'm gonna go ahead and just have off to the side really quick. But yeah, overall, as far as comfort goes, this feels really comfortable in the hand. And the one thing that kind of concerns me, because I already nicked it as far as not having any type of connectors to allowing you to form that lightsaber pike, is um, I'm, I don't really know how I feel about the button. I feel like this could potentially break. Uh, just to kind of give you guys a closer look here. So here's the button to activate it. If you notice how wobbly that is, and I know it's not just on this particular one. There's other people's reviews that I've seen that has also mentioned that. So that really concerns me as a potential item to break 
if you are someone that's going to be playing with it. If you're someone that's just going to have it on display, it's not going to be a big deal. But for those who are just going to be toying it around and flinging it while having it in your hands, again, that does concern me indeed. So let's go ahead and bring over a blade, which again, we have my blade here from Sabi's Workshop. And plus, I don't really have a 36 inch blade at the moment. So of course, it does make that sound when you do insert a blade and take it out. So insert and then disconnect. All right, go ahead and push in and then twist. Now, of course, each and every blade from the Legacy lineup, including Sabi's Workshop, does have a little bit of wobble. However, that's actually by design. The reason why it has the wobble is because this will, by it being wobbly and stuff like that, is that you're not putting too much pressure and strength on the actual hilt of the saber. So thus, this will be able to absorb a lot of the impact. There is actually a video that I've seen online where someone was actually putting the blades to a strength test between light hits, medium, and of course hard hitting, which by the way, if you do any type of hard hits, you will damage the blade, but the hilt will be perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and ignite this and see how this appears. So as far as the button goes, it's very easy to activate and deactivate. However, I feel like that's also a concern besides how fragile the button appears to me but also while holding it and swinging it i feel like you're going to easily deactivate that so like i said i kind of feel like it should have been more of like a toggle switch in my opinion uh so let me go ahead and let you guys listen to the sound and um try and recall and i'll probably bring over my sabi saber so we can kind of see if the sound effects are identical with my yellow kyber crystal so here is the sound all right let's Go ahead one more time. Now let's go ahead and bring it over my Sabi lightsaber because I do have a yellow kyber crystal in mine and let's go see how that stacks up to this. There we go. Here's my saber, which if you guys haven't seen the design, there is that one. Now let's see how this sounds with the yellow crystal. Once more. Now back again with the temple guard. So as you can see there, with my Sabi saber with the yellow kyber crystal and the default electronics located in the temple guard, we have two completely different sound designs but you guys can let me know which one you like between the two. So overall, what do I think of the Saber? Overall, I think it's a great piece. Like I said, the negative for me personally would be uh, how fragile this button appears to be. And the fact that, again, the biggest opportunity missed here is that there is no connector which will allow us to form the lightsaber pike. But thankfully, what I love about the Star Wars community is that people are already on top of it. And hopefully in the near future, I'll be able to acquire two of these. And of course, with the small blades and be able to get that connector off Etsy to form the lightsaber pike. But again, that'll be for probably a potential video down the line. But until then, let me know what you guys think about this. Overall, I think it's a great piece nonetheless. And again, for $110, you can't go wrong. And I know Samuel, the one who allowed me to unbox the Jedi Temple Guard mask, is going to be very happy with his saber. And of course, that concludes for today's video. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next video. It has been centuries since invaders dared set foot in the temple's halls. Should they come again, the yellow blades of the guard shall meet them. Thank <laughs> you.